Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So if you saw, of course you saw, <laughs> the title and the thumbnail for this video, I am doing a full face of the most expensive products that I have in my collection. I added it up, and everything on my face right now cost a total of over a thousand dollars moment of silence for my checking account now i will say 90 percent of this stuff i got on sale for 50 percent off i think so maybe like 75 percent <laughs> not 90 but all of this stuff has been bought with a discount so i did not spend that much but that's how much it costs if you were to buy it full price. That's not including any shipping or taxes or anything like that. So this face is very expensive right now. Before we get into the video, if you're new and you love makeup, you love all things related to beauty, join the family, hit that subscribe button, and let's find out what I have on my face. I have been wanting to film this for a while now and I am finally doing it. I hope I pulled everything. I'm not sure, but we are going to just go through this box that I have right here. These are, I think, the most expensive items I have in my collection and we're going to talk about it. I'm going, some of this stuff is a first impressions. That's another bad thing, but we're not even going to go there. I am going to go ahead and prime my face. I have two primers that are the same price. These are both $58. This is the Gucci Serum Silk Priming Foundation. And then I also have the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. I think I've used the Hourglass one. I wasn't sure which one I was gonna use, but I don't think I've used this Gucci one yet. If I don't do a video on it, it's hard for me to remember. So that's why I don't think I've used this yet. But I feel like, Maybe I have used this. I feel like from the smell of it, it kind of, it feels, smells familiar and it kind of feels familiar. I'm sorry if I'm a little stuffy. I woke up this morning with something going on. Um, just feeling a little tiny bit under the weather. Not sick, but just congested. So if y'all hear me sniffing, that's why. But this went on really smooth. Like I said, I don't remember if I worn it, but... I think I have, it has a really strong fragrance. So if you don't like fragrance, you might not like this. While I'm letting that soak in, I'm gonna start with my eyes today because I'm using a new eyeshadow palette. Now, I went back and forth because I have Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes that I have not used yet. <laughs> and we all know how expensive those are. I have the Mothership One Subliminal. I bought this one when I went on my Cool Tone Kick. Um, I didn't get it when it first came out because I wasn't into cool tones, but those are $128, right? So Tom Ford quads are 90 and I feel like you get 10 shades of Pat McGrath for 128 versus four shades of Tom Ford for $90. So I feel like I should use Tom Ford and I haven't used a Tom Ford quad in a while. I also have a new one that I just picked up. Now I don't pay full price for these. I pick mine up at the CCS, so I get these for like 45 bucks, maybe something like that, which makes a lot more sense to me. But this is the quad in Tiger Eye, and this is what she looks like. So I think this is so pretty. It's neutral, not too warm. Are these all? These are creams. It says eye color quad cream, which I don't think any of my other ones are. So that's something else that is new with this one so maybe i'll use both but i'm just gonna throw together a quick little eye look nothing special and i know y'all have seen the pat mcgrath god this is so pretty see i haven't used this yet it has not been swatched nothing look at that special shade in the corner Ooh, that is catching my eye um yeah, I don't know what I'm doing because this is like cool tone. The other one's warm tone. I don't think I realized there was a duochrome in here. <laughs> that makes me really want to use this, but okay. I don't know. Let's see what Tom Ford can give us. I seriously have a question. So I know for me, I like nice things. 
I'm sure a lot of people do. And, oh, sorry, I got to prime my eyes. So I have this Tom Ford. A lot of this stuff's going to be Tom Ford. And a lot of this stuff I get from the CCS. So I'm not paying full price for it. But we all know that Tom Ford is a really expensive luxury brand. So the most of the stuff that I have here is going to be from that brand. So these little pots that remind me of the MAC paint pots are $46. I think is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing different prices and some of this stuff is you can't get anymore. I don't know if that's why it was at the CCS, but I guess I've used this. Um, I've swatched it, but it reminds me of laying low and all of those other pot primers. And it's basically, y'all know, it's just a so say an eyeshadow, but we use them as a base. But anyway, my question is, do you guys think that what's your opinion on luxury brands like i know personally i enjoy the packaging there are some things that can be duped by brands that are less expensive but you are giving something up right so is it the ingredients that they make it with is it the packaging and the experience of all that some people don't care about that stuff so you know you don't care about it you don't spend the money on it but I do know like some of the brands put skincare in their products, which will make it cost a little more. But, you know, honestly, is it more just like you're paying for Nike versus Reebok or New Balance or some other brand that's not as expensive? You know, you're paying for the name. I don't know. Y'all tell me your opinions on buying high end makeup. Do you think it's worth it? Do you have some in your collection? Do you just want to try it because it's there? I kind of want to go neutral, cool toned for what I have on. So I'm going to start with this shade down here in the corner and see what I can get. These are all satins, so they should blend out very well, but I'm not used to putting a satin in my crease. I don't know how I feel about this. I think I'm going to go into Pat just to kind of help tie this together but I've never used I've used my other quads I've never used anything of his that was a cream shadow but these are applying really nicely and you can't deny this packaging is just so luxe and I do feel like I don't know it's a whole experience when I'm out somewhere and I'm pulling out a Tom Ford lipstick or whatever like I remember when I first got into makeup I don't remember which friend it was but I had a friend we were going somewhere and she pulled a product out of her purse to do touch up her makeup or whatever. And I just remember it was like Dior or something expensive. And I remember just being like, wow, <laughs> which is so silly. But I just I think I'm going into the Pat palette. I kind of want something. Hmm, I don't want gray though. Maybe I'll just use my bronzer. For my bronzer, I also have this Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in Flicker. So it looks exactly like the quad. But this one, let me double check my prices, is $90. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this bronzer and put that as well. Yeah, I know that was very silly of me to be just enamored because like, oh my God, look at this person has an, has an expensive makeup product. But yeah, it got me. And maybe that's kind of what uh, inspired, I guess you could say, my love, my desire to want to try more expensive brands. So I don't know. Y'all can tell me if that's crazy or not. I can laugh about it, but... I'm going to try this kind of orange warmer shade right here and see. And I'm using, okay, it's coming, picking up with a fluffy brush. Um, tell me if you've had any experiences like that. See, here's my issue with this. These are all kind of shiny and I don't love this in my crease. And it's not to say that the shadows aren't pretty. I just feel like, where's my pigment? <laughs> I want my Juvia's Place. See, so here's the thing. This is exactly what I'm talking about because do I feel like this 
Squad by Tom Ford is worth $90. And right now, I'm sitting here like, no, I don't. I think it's pretty. And it's great that he's doing a different formula. And I don't know if this is even available anymore or this is discontinued because it didn't sell a lot. I don't know, but just based off of what I'm using right now and how that was feeling, no. I definitely don't feel like it was worth it. I'm just gonna try to keep deepening up my crease. I'm gonna go into this dark brown shade here and see how that applies. I did put a little bit of one of the Pat McGrath shades just to help tone down some of the shine I'm feeling. Because like I said, I am not used to having these shiny shades in my crease i don't know i guess i just feel like right now i feel like with the price of everything going up makeup of course is included in that and it's like with these high-end brands that are already expensive i just feel like it's starting to be too much so for me it's even more incentive to just wait for a sale or honestly give my money to the indie brands because i feel like they're not gonna just put out, or shouldn't anyway, the brands that I like that I've been using a lot lately, like Blend Bunny and Adept Cosmetics and Unearthly Cosmetics, um, Ace Beauté, I just placed an order with them. Like I feel like those brands, they really care about what they put out and they're trying to be inclusive versus some of these bigger brands are kind of just like, you know, we have a name and we've developed it and we're just going to put out what we want and people are going to buy it anyway. Like we have our target audience and we're not really worried about anybody else. I also know that whenever I do eyeshadow first, I hate the way it looks and then it comes together. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. But just off of what we have going on right here, I don't like these super shiny shades in my crease. So we may have to try to do something with that. But... Let's figure out what I'm gonna do with my lid. I went back in and did a quick little tiny, tiny cut crease with the paint, I shouldn't call it a paint pot, but y'all know the Tom Ford eye color. And I guess I'm gonna finish with this palette since I said I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna take this lighter shade up here and just put that on my lid. I hope this is, ooh, it looks like it's gonna be pretty. Ooh, okay, that saved this palette. I probably didn't even need to cut my crease very shimmery. I did not expect it to look that gold because in the pan, it looks a little more peach. Like I don't even feel like I need to go back in with my finger to apply this. All right, that saved you. I mean, I spent my money already, so it's not like I'm gonna throw it away. And I could resell it, but I also collect these. Like I have several of them and it's just the ones that I really like or was attracted to the color story. So, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. I'm gonna go back with that shade I tried to put in my crease and see. Well, that's pretty there. Let me just try to blend those together. But yeah, if I would've paid $90 for this, I would've been pissed because ain't no way you can tell me this is worth 90 bucks. We're gonna move into the rest of the face now. So for foundation, I have two and <laughs> It's really gonna be about which one matches me right now because I am darker. I have the La Mer Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. This is $140. Also bought this from the Cosmetics Company store. The other option is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Soft Radiance Foundation. This one is $150. Also bought at the Cosmetics Company store. I'm telling y'all, I cannot spend that much. I can't, I cannot do it. So right now we're just gonna try to figure out which one matches me. I do have another Tom Ford, the Traceless Matte one. I think that one is less expensive. I don't know why, maybe the packaging probably um, in a darker shade so I can mix them. I might do that. But I've never worn this La Mer one because it was always too dark for me. So I kinda wanna wear it. So this is the La Mer, and this is the Tom Ford. 
sigh. Okay, we're going to do the Tom Ford. It is the most expensive, but I'm going to grab my other Tom Ford, which is darker, and mix them. I have the Traceless Soft Matte in shade 11 Dusk, and then this one is in 10.7 Amber. This is really liquidy. I wonder if we can make this work. I'm going to try and see if I can just use bronzer. I would like to wear this one by itself. Ooh, this shade is a little red. I wonder how it's going to dry down though. Because it does say it is a luminous foundation. So I don't know if it's going to dry down and oxidize or is it just going to stay dewy and stay this shade. I hope it's long wearing because I am going somewhere later and I need this to look good. I don't think this is bad. It is a little light. I'm going to mix a little bit of the other one in also because the undertone is different and just help tone down that red. I probably should have mixed them on my hand. It's funny though, because when I was looking through my collection to see like, you know, most expensive eyeliner and mascara and whatever, I don't buy those really expensive. If I get it in like a set or something like that, that's one thing, but like going to the store and just going and picking up a Dior mascara or something like that, that has never been something that I cared about. I like how this looks. You can definitely see the do like the sh not shine but it's definitely not matte and even though I mix the matte one in with it I still feel like I can see the glow coming through it so and I think this looks good so we're gonna stop with that with the color I think this is really good coverage so for concealer I have Tom Ford too I have the y'all I did not know this thing here. Hold on, let me double check my prices. This concealer, the shade and light, shade and illuminate concealer, $95. $95. I think the shade's gonna be too light, but we're gonna try it. I picked mine up in the shade 5W0 or O, tan. I don't know. Let me look. Because I also have this Emotion Proof Concealer in 12.0 Madagascar. I used to wear this a lot because this was, when I was lighter, very close to my skin tone. And so, yeah, this is light. So this is the shade and Illuminate one. And then this is the Emotion Proof one. Um... But then I started feeling like the emotion proof one. One, it wasn't enough coverage. Two, I kind of felt like it was like tingling under my eyes. I'm gonna put a little bit of my color corrector just here. So I don't know. I feel like it got to the point to where I stopped liking it as much and I wanted to declutter it. And then I said I was gonna wait to do this video just to be sure. So maybe we'll use both. What difference does it make? So I'm gonna go in, let's try this one first. Yeah, that's light. Oh, I'm liking how this foundation is looking though. And just to show you if you can see the difference in the color, this one is a little bit darker. So this, we'll put this one here. This isn't a bad concealer. I just feel like for my under eyes, it wasn't a lot of coverage and I swear I feel like I remember it making my under eyes tingle, which we cannot have that. Have y'all ever had that before where you have something that you feel like is not working with your skin, but you keep trying it anyway because you don't want to get rid of it? I am so bad for that just because I feel like maybe I did something wrong and I need to try something different to make it work. But if it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. And it's a lot harder to just throw something away when you've spent your money on it. I don't get PR. This is all my hard earned money that I spend on stuff that I want. I'm not complaining. This is my love. That's not light enough for me right now. You know, makeup is my second love, first love. I loved makeup before I loved powerlifting. So I guess it's my first love. But yeah, so I don't have an issue with spending my money on it because if it's something I want, I'm gonna get it. But at the same time, like there's just no point in holding on to stuff that you're not going to wear because you don't like it or 
whatever, just because you spent your money on it. I am feeling like, normally y'all know I complain about my forehead lines, but everything is looking so smooth right now. I don't know if it's that primer. That is the hardest thing about first impressions. You never know what is making everything look so good. Yeah, so sometimes I used to be worse about like just not wanting to throw stuff away because oh, I spent my money on it. I don't want to waste my money, but it is literally wasting your money if it's just sitting there and you're not using it. And now with Mercari and Poshmark and all that stuff, like some of this stuff, not all of it, you can resell and make some of your money back as opposed to just putting it in the trash which I am starting to go through my collection and stuff that is still good, especially like eyeshadow palettes and powder products. I am going to be adding to my Mercari and my Poshmark. So if you guys are interested in picking up some products that are going to be discounted, still in really good shape, because y'all know I take care of my makeup, then I'll have links below for that. But yeah, anyway, so I'm going to keep blending this out, but I am not going to lie. I am really liking how this looks. Like, I feel like everything is just smooth and my face is looking super flawless. For setting powders, I have two. So my House Labs setting powder, this one is $38, which I didn't think I remember it being that expensive. But then I also have the Pat McGrath Under Eye Blurring Under Eye Powder. This is smaller and it's $32. I also have her Face Setting or Loose Setting Powder, which is $39. I don't think I have any other ones that are more expensive than that. That's expensive enough. But this one is not going to be for my under eyes because it's too deep. But I may use it on the rest of my face. I kind of miss using my under eye powder. So I'm going to use that because it's also smaller than the House Labs one. So I kind of feel like it's one of those things where, you know, price per unit or whatever you want to call it, the Pat McGrath is more. This kicks up so much in the pan, but man, I love how this makes my under eyes look. At one point, I was telling myself, like, every time Pat McGrath had a sale for 30% off, I was going to go try to pick one of these up, but I don't use it enough. I do have a backup, and I just, I have them in my collection, and I don't know why. I just, this isn't the easiest thing to use. I would love to just, just because it's so messy, I love just dipping my sponge in a loose powder and patting it and going. It's quicker or using a more firmer packed powder and putting that on. But when I have time to like sit down and make sure I'm not making a mess everywhere, that's when I'll grab this one. So now I'm going to go in with, I don't have any other cream products, I don't think. So I'm going to go like, look how dark this is. I probably could have used just the original foundation that I had and then just went over this with it and I would have been fine. So I'm just lightly setting my face because of the fact that that foundation is supposed to be a luminous foundation. Y'all look at my face. I feel like you don't even see as much of the texture as you normally do. I don't anyway. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can, but I don't. For bronzer, I have this Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in 06 Flicker. And this is what she looks like. I hope this is dark enough. Another reason I wanted to set my whole face because this has a sheen to it. Oh yeah, she's, whoa. Okay, take your time. I was not expecting that to be that dark. We're putting enough of that. I feel like this looks patchy. Y'all can see that. Hmm. I don't know what's up with that. I've not used this yet, so this is a true first impressions, and I'm gonna say right now, I don't like how this is applying. For blush, Oh, and yeah, that was 90 bucks. And then I also have the Skin Illuminating Powder Duo. This is a blush and a highlighter. And this is also 90 bucks. 
I know I like this blush. I have worn it. This was upstairs in my bathroom for a while. I feel like it has to be built up a lot and I do love the highlighter. And this has a sheen in it. I don't know if I want this. I know this is more expensive than all my other blushes though. So trying to stick with what I said using what it is, but it would be nice if he came out with some matte stuff too. That is pretty though, but I'm probably gonna go over it with something else. <laughs> All right, for highlighter, let's see, cause these both have highlighters in it. So I'm just gonna stay with these. I'm pretty sure that other one's too gold. This is the one I normally wear and I like how that looks. And then this is the other one. Ooh, you know what? I don't normally do super gold, but let's try it. Yeah, she's gold. Ooh, I'm gonna go over that one with the other one. You know what, <laughs> if I'm honest right now, using that, I'm gonna have to use it again, but I don't know if I wanna keep this because I don't like how patchy that looked and this highlighter is too gold. Y'all tell me if I'm tripping, do I need to let it go or should I keep it? I'm gonna take one of my Pat McGrath blushes. This is in the shade Paradise Venus. This is one of my favorites. And I'm going to use this because I want more color, I want less shine, and I need something a little more bronzy to help kind of blend everything. That looks so good. Okay, so we're going to do these eyebrows, y'all. I literally only saved this next product for this video and I'm decluttering it as soon as I am done because it does not work for me. This is the Tom Ford Brow Pomade in 04 Espresso. This is just way too waxy for me. I do not like the texture of it. And when I used it, I just felt like I kept having to dip back into the product and just felt like it wasn't, I don't know. I don't know why it's not working for me. And the color's fine. It's a little dark. Because I remember when I first looked at it, I was like, that is not going to work. The color is okay. But it just, it feels like it's super slippery. And like normally for it to be that dark when I get to this part of the tail, like where's the product? So I'm just to do one eyebrow and then I'll do the other one off camera. But y'all can see like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm used to like my ABH or hell, even my Maybelline brow pomade like you put this on and it's there like look how many times I'm going over this spot and what's happening it still looks patchy like it's not doing anything I don't know what's happening and this is the emotion proof no it don't say that I made that up <laughs> a lot of his stuff says emotion proof and I'm like okay what does that mean like it's supposed to be good through crying and laughing it ain't gonna crease and it ain't gonna smudge off and it ain't gonna settle into fine lines like what exactly does that mean but I know what it's not gonna do and it's not filling in my eyebrows so I'm not gonna play with this I'm gonna do my eyebrows with another product and it is not gonna be expensive but I just wanted to show you this because mm -mm, I can't to finish off my eye look I went ahead and did my bottom lash line really quick I just put this darkest shade, wrong palette, um, this darkest shade on the outer part and then this kind of pinky coral shade on the middle and then this light shade on the inside. But I do want to try to darken this up a little bit. This shade is actually really good. I like all of the shades and you know what? Maybe I just need to try it on my lid. That first shade that I tried for a crease color, that was, that set me off on the wrong foot. <laughs> So maybe I just need to use it as a lid shade and it'll be okay, but it was not the best for me in my crease. For mascara, the most expensive mascara I have is the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. This is one of my favorites. I have a small one open. I have a big tube somewhere and then I also have a backup of it. So these, I picked up a few of them during the sale if I can find out how much she is, she is $32. So if you have not tried this mascara, 
this is one that I would recommend. For eyeliner, I have the Urban Decay Perversion Liquid Eyeliner. I have not used this before. Is this my most expensive? I, honestly, I don't know. I don't buy expensive ones. My favorite of all time is the Physician's Formula one, and that is not expensive. You can find it at the drugstore. So I do think that finding anything that's like super pricey in my collection for an eyeliner is gonna be hard, and I was tired of looking. So love that this one has a brush tip. That is my favorite. And this brush reminds me of my Positions Formula one. And y'all know that this line of products, the Perversion eye products, are supposed to be like super long wearing and super black. And yeah, I can definitely see it with this one. So wing isn't going to be too crazy, but super easy. I like this. Is it worth the price? Maybe, but I also like my Physicians Formula just as much. So now back to mascara. If you are looking for a mascara, I definitely think you should try this one. I love, like, immediately my lashes are dark. I feel like it helps to thicken them. This wand is a little big, so I do get nervous using this on my bottom lashes. But I love that I can see my lashes when I use this, even with eyeliner on. Okay, we are finishing with the Pat McGrath lip liner i do think this is the most expensive lip liner that i have and i'm glad that it is a nude so i can make it work oh the mascara is 32 dollars. i'm trying to find how much this pencil is i think i saw 25 dollars, 29 dollars. so these are pretty pricey um do i think it's nice yes i don't love that you have to sharpen it which i'm currently having to do i prefer retractable pencils but this is in the shade ground control I just wish she would do a retractable one but I think this is such a gorgeous brown and then for lipstick I have this is a new shade for me this is the Tom Ford lip lacquer luxe in the shade 03 lark it is a matte I do not know now if this is going to go with my look, so I might be wearing it. I might not, which she is, and I don't think that's going to go. So I'm going to pull one of my lipsticks, which these are like $56, $60, something crazy, but I want it to go. So hold on. So we are going to go. That could go, but I don't know if I want it that dark. All right, so I have this little mini. It's the only one I could find that is a nude that I want. But this is in the shade 1995, and this is her matte trance lipstick. You can get this in a full size, and it's still a little pink, but it's not as bad. I don't think I realized I had so many pinkish or like that kind of mauve like this. Which one is it? Not suede rose. Yeah, Aqui, whichever one it is. I don't know, that's like just my everyday, I will throw that on with anything lip color, but sometimes I want a little different. So yeah, I just wanted something not so pink and more nude. Yet here we are. And last but not least, because I do want to put something on my lips, I have this La Mer Lip Volumizer. Is that what it's called? Yes. Y'all, this thing right here, $85. I thought that the Dior lip oil was the most expensive thing I had, which is like 40 bucks, but I forgot about this. I don't know how I forgot because it is in my makeup bag, but makeup bag in my purse. This thing, it is one of those kind of plumping a little bit, not bad, but it's so expensive. And I'm not sure I understand why. I got it in a set that I got from the CCS. And that's why I ended up with it. Because otherwise, I don't think I would have been checking for it. But I can't lie. Packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Smells minty. Lips look great. So we're going to finish with some lashes. I don't know how I forgot that I was doing lashes. I have a set. This is the Velour Magnetic Liner and Lash Kit. 
This is originally $28. I think the most expensive pair of lashes that I have are $28 also from either Lily Lashes or Velour. I don't know. I have both, but either way. So I just decided to go ahead and use this because I wanted to use Magnetic. These kind of look like half lashes though. Have y'all seen these before? Because I found this for 20 bucks at TJ Maxx. So again, I didn't pay full price. Y'all let me know if you've seen this before, if you've used this because these really do. It says you don't have to trim them or anything, but they look really small. Ooh, these look so pretty though. That looks so pretty. And it looks like you won't have to trim them or do anything. So I'm just gonna put these on real quick and then I'll come back with the finished look. Yay, my lashes cooperated. I have to say, I remember trying this liner. So this is the Velour 3-in-1 Lash & Go liner. It is a regular, liner that you can use for just like eyeliner or you can use it when it's wet to do regular falsies or when it dries you can use it for magnetic i had this before and i think i just let it sit too long because when i pulled it out the tube it was goopy and i was like this is trash but this worked really well so this is actually i'm probably gonna get this again to use regularly but i'm gonna go ahead and spray my face Charlotte Tilbury setting powder, setting powder, setting spray is the most expensive one that I have. Mm -mm. I don't love the mister on this. I know my makeup is not going to go anywhere, so that is the point. But that is it. That is the full face. I like how this came out. I love how this came out, to be honest. The only thing that kind of threw me off was the contour slash bronzer from Tom Ford. Everything else I think looks good. I'm gonna tell y'all right now though, out of everything that I used today, I'm gonna finally get rid <laughs> of this concealer. It has just been sitting. I don't love it. I don't wanna use it. I used it for a while and I feel like this lash is being, this one I had to take off and reapply and I don't feel like it's cooperating the other way the other one did. It's stuck though, but I just feel like it's not curved up as much as the other, but it's okay. Um, this is the only thing that I'm getting rid of. I've been waiting to get rid of it, been holding on to it just to use it to get rid of it. Now it can go. I might still sell my Tom Ford duo with the bronzer, even though I kind of like how this looks. I have other bronzers I like. I'm not doing it. So if you're interested in checking out my Poshmark or Macari, again, they will be linked down below. I'm going to be adding more stuff to it because I am trying to only keep things that I'm in love with and inspired by and stop just holding on to stuff because I spent money on it. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think about this look. Do you have any of these products? Do you think high-end makeup is worth it or are you more an affordable drugstore makeup lover? Let me know. I love both, but I just, I kind of have a tendency to gravitate towards the look stuff just because I like it. I like it's pretty. I just... I like them both, but you know, it's nice to have nice things. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. If you're new, I hope you decided to join the family and I will see you in my next video. Bye.